Hi, I'm Amelia from TwinMusic.com. Uh, this is our signature question. So, if you could have any band perform one of your songs, which band would it be? Which song would it be? And would it be in your style of this? Oh, that's a that's a difficult question. <laughs> I haven't really thought about it. Um, no, probably um, probably have a Mozart do. Uh, I don't I don't know. Um, maybe uh, Fields of the Nephilim do, uh, and uh, of course, if a band does a cover song, they should do it. Um, they should make it their own. So, yeah, I'd like to see that. Yeah, Hi. my first question would be simple. Do you know the French band called Scald, which is also uh, the title of your album in uh, was 18 and I was right. I'm right. Yeah, I know. I know uh, about the band. Yeah, I've met them. Uh, or at least I've met some of them. Yeah, so I'm familiar. And what do you think about it? Uh, I think uh, I think it's uh, okay. I think they do some some uh, some some uh, things that I've I haven't really heard that much of it. I've heard a few songs and yeah, I understand why people like it. It's cool. It's always uh, you know I when I started out this uh, my work, one of the things that I did want people to do was to. Um, to take up a lot of these instruments that uh, that we use in Balloon and I started to use uh, at that point, you know, that was more or less forgotten knowledge, uh, like 20 years ago. So the fact that that many bands are are now starting to use use this type of uh, instruments and create new songs uh, on on ancient tools, I uh, I think that's a a great thing. So yeah. Uh, hello, I'm Mathieu from Metama TV, and um, my question was, how did the pandemic impact on your work, and um, how was the energy during recording sessions? What has changed? Um, well, I was, um, of course, the the pandemic when when we realized that. Uh, that this was actually happening, and, and uh, the world was closing down, and, and uh, that you know we had we had lots of tours. We had an album coming out uh, in that period that we decided we we had to push uh, because yeah everything was closing down, even production plans were closing down, so it was impossible to do it. So of course that was a it was a great disappointment. Uh, nonetheless, we chose to. To, to to keep a constructive uh, focus and and uh, yeah focus on the, uh, being present nonetheless and, and creating a different plan uh, so I would say and also I was lucky in the sense that uh, I you know doing concerts and touring that's only one part of my work I also do a lot of studio work uh, at that point I was working a lot with the music for Assassin's Creed Valhalla video game and um, um, well what can I say that <laughs> the pandemic kind of allowed me to do that in a more healthy way because uh, it's a lot of work and, and um, yeah it gave me more time to focus on that so so for the first year even though it was less live performances and traveling I, I, I had the same work amount uh, just I, I, I had to do it from home basically uh, and uh, I don't know the, the recording uh, process. It, you know that that doesn't change. That hasn't changed for 20 years since I started this project. So the method is the same. That stays untouched uh, by by everything and anything. So, yeah. Hello, I'm Thomas from Orange. And I have the last question: How it happened as this collaboration with Ubisoft for Assassin's Creed Valhalla? Well, uh, I was contacted by by them uh, a few. Yeah, I think it was in 2017 or 20, 
split the AC. I was approached, they wanted, they were already using a lot of my music uh, in, in like the pre-production of the game, so... Um, and and uh, yeah, they, they asked me if I wanted to work on it basically, and uh, I've, I've been asked to, to work on several games before, and I, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm very picky and uh, selective on, on the projects I want to work on, and, uh, and especially when it comes to projects portraying the Viking Age or the Norse history, because um, yeah, there, is, there needs to be a, a, at least a serious attempt to, to treat the sources in a certain way and, and so on. Um, but what, what I saw uh, immediately was that they basically had the, the two things. They had the, you know, Assassin's Creed, that's part fiction, part his, historical facts. That's the premise, but that's okay. But they wanted to... But I, I saw right away that they, they had more like more or less the same kind of idea um, that I had for what my part in it would be. And, and the second thing I liked is that they they wanted to highlight one of the things that I feel very often is forgotten in movies and in TV series when they portray the Viking Age, and that is the the skull, the poetic tradition, um, which was so much at the heart of the old Norse culture. Uh, and it's very, it's always forgotten, basically. And, and they wanted to do something about that, and I wanted to be part of it. Hi, so um, these are the Nordic history, which is your first, um, first week uh, sort of, of, of history. Well, I, I think I, uh, I, I think I like history in general, uh, and um, you know, because history, history, I like history not because. Not because I, I dream about oh well, it's not a romanticizing thing, it's not escapism. It's not this idea that everything was so much better back in the Viking Age or in the time of the Pharaohs or, or you know, it's history is one of the best tools we have to learn, you know? To learn how to do things better now. It's not about copying the past, it's about learning from it so we can do things better. Uh, and and in this day and age, where we actually have a, a, you know, history and culture is very often thought with a, either a historical or a religious agenda, you know, the truth is always decided upon with an agenda behind it. And for the first time in society today, these borders are, are not there, you know, so it's a, actually a unique chance to revisit history on more neutral ground. So, so without these religious or political prejudice, and that is important. So no matter what, if it's the Norse culture or, or Egyptian or Greek or Turkish or, or you know, it, there's so much similarities. And that's what I see when I go far enough back in time to the Nordic history, is that how strikingly similar all of, all of the cultures on Earth are, whether it's the music, the instruments, the mythology is, you know, it's one big happy fucking family, basically, uh, when you go far enough back in time. And that's important to, to remember when, when we are so, we, we get so scared about other people's culture, is that, well, do a little digging and you'll see that it's basically more or less the same, maybe in a different color, yeah? You will I translate in English. He's gonna. Uh, yeah. Vous avez joué euh, pendant le confinement en, sur un concert enregistré. Là, vous rejouez en live. Est-ce que ça vous fait de rejouer en live et surtout au Hellfest, ce que vous avez joué au Château de Nantes il y a quelques années, là, le fait de rejouer en France dans la région. Vous ressentez quoi The question is basically, uh, you've been uh, doing concerts, streaming live, and now you're back to live gigging. You've played in the uh, Castle of Nantes. So how does it feel to come back to the region and perform against? Uh, Sort of, in front of fans. Yeah. You know, being being back, uh, meeting people, looking in them their eyes, you know, and uh, connecting with them in, in such a setting, um, it, it is fantastic. And it, it, 
I don't think I knew how much I missed it until I, I got back, you know. Uh, it, it, there is something special with these, when you come together and, and you share this moment. Uh, they, they are always different. Every night is different, you know. I'm different every day. Uh, and, and so are you. And, and tapping into that energy uh, again has, has been absolutely uh, fantastic, you know. We, we did one streamed concert during the pandemic. And um, and in that concert, we decided we didn't want to do the same as we do when we go on stage in front of an audience because there is no audience there. So why do the do the same thing? You know, it, um, it's a different format. So why not play with that format and 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 maybe even try and compensate for for the fact that that dialogue is not present. So. Um, so we did one live stream where we, we played around with the format and of course for us it was special because we had we hadn't seen each other in, in uh, we hadn't been in the same room together for, for a year. So that, that friction made made gave us a lot of energy uh, that maybe compensates for, for some of the uh, yeah, the fact that uh, there were no no audience. Uh, there, but yeah, it, it feels good to be to, to be back. Uh, it's good to be back in France. You know, it it, it always we always feel very very welcome uh, by by the passionate uh, French audience. So um, I really look forward to to uh, yeah singing our songs uh, for you guys tonight. So first of all, uh, how are you? And uh, happy Lisa, um, you know, the process of summer, because I know that uh, you guys are in Chupan and it's not so, right? I would like to say, first of all, that I really like your music and it's pushed me towards creation and spirituality that I'm developing myself. My question here is actually, um, you you work and collaborate with a lot of people uh, during music and everything, my question is, with who would you like to work again or later? And with who do you want to work in the future with new people? Do you need new refreshments, new beginnings? Um, and do you think you will change a bit of your style and including new stuff that you never did before? Uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, and likewise, um, I think that I think that collaborating with other musicians um, is um, well. It's a it's an important part of. Um, I think it's you know it it keeps uh, it keeps things fresh. Uh, you learn something, you know, uh, and um, it, it's uh, yeah. You're getting challenged basically. Um, so so I do enjoy. Uh, working with people, I I have a rule, and that rule is that um, doesn't matter if it's a small or a big artist. Uh, it's more about if I get asked to join on something. It's more about uh, if it's to collaborate on a song. It's, it's if that song speaks to me. If I think that I can do a, jo a good job on it, or if I hear myself in it, it's, so it's more about the art than the artist in a way. Um, what I can say, I, do, I don't like to, um, well, I, I've always enjoyed really much working with Eva Bjornsson from uh, Enslaved. Uh, that collaboration has been going on. We've worked together now for, for several projects over quite a few years, almost 10 years since we started. Uh, and uh, that's something we both really enjoy. And I. What I can say for sure is that at some point we, me and him, will, will, uh, when our, when our calendars align, in the, in, in the, yeah, uh, then, uh, then there will definitely be uh, more music uh, together with him. Yeah. We're gonna have another question in French. And I'll translate it. Okay? Oh, yeah. Uh, I speak English like a Spanish call, so I prefer to speak French. Voir ce soir, vous allez jouer dans le premier jour de la deuxième partie du festival, derrière deux grandes têtes d'affiches finales, Scorpion et puis Halloween. Alors, est-ce que pour vous, c'est difficile avec euh, votre mood qui est plutôt folk, 
qui est plutôt tranquille, euh, issue de la musique traditionnelle. Est-ce que pour vous, vous vous préparez, euh, est-ce que vous avez l'habitude de jouer dans ce genre de, de situation après des groupes de métal où ça joue fort Et deuxième question, c'est est-ce que vous avez déjà travaillé à partir de matériel traditionnel de collectage euh, fait par des, des ethnomusicologues pour euh, travailler votre musique et voir ce qu'on faisait déjà au 19e siècle, ce que les chercheurs ont trouvé dans les musiques traditionnelles d'Europe There's a couple of questions actually. The first one is basically about your slot because you're playing a, a late uh, main stage, um, like it's super late, like one o'clock in the, in the morning, and you're basically uh, playing after scorpions and uh, big metal headliners, and uh, there's basically a different type of ambience. So, how do you approach this type of gigs? First question. Um, I, I approach it like I do any gig. You know, performing a concert is about becoming one with the music. It's about becoming one with the surroundings, the setting where you are, and it's about becoming one with the people who are there. And and that is the premise of any concert, whether it's in a small room like this, or if it's a, on a big plane like that, as the Scorpio. You know, it's it's the same. Um, so I don't approach it any differently. We are going to do, we are going to go on that stage and and do what we always do, basically. Um, and, and try and connect to the people who, who are there to, to listen and, and uh, yeah, with this beautiful area. Yeah. The second part of the question, was, which is completely different, is a technical question about your instruments you're using. Are you going to use maybe some traditional instruments? Can you maybe tell a little anecdote about uh, one of the instruments you're using that's maybe part of your heritage, built by uh, special artists you, uh, you appreciate? Uh, no music ethnomusical stuff with yeah. the, the 18 uh, like ba Bella Bartok you know yeah you if, if there are like musicians uh, doing doing that that's uh, yeah well, uh, uh, yeah th there are of course there are many uh, things I can I can talk about about my instrument for hours but uh, uh, I don't know. question for you. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the thing with these instruments is that um, they are nature instruments. Uh, several of them are, uh, you know, there is a more or less an unbroken line of basically it's a living tradition of using them in the Nord uh, in Norway and Sweden that goes back to the Bronze Age three to five thousand years back in time, uh, like some of the horn instruments and so on. Uh, and being part of that history is of course a special thing. Um, and the other thing with nature instruments is that um, they tend to have a, a, a will of their own, uh, more than you know a guitar you buy in a, in a, in a shop, it's, it's more, uh, or a regular drum kit, it's more controllable. Uh, but these instruments, they are more wild, they are more more fragile in terms of heat and temperature, if it's going to rain, if it's warm or cold, you know, and, and of course, the, you know, like the gold horn uh, that I play, uh, they are they are this kind of animal, they are like the goats, they, they, they don't give a fuck what you want them to do, they do their own, uh, and um, um, and so several times when I when I've been on stage, especially outdoor concerts late in the in the night, and uh, if the horn has been laying there for for an hour or so, uh, and and then it's becoming dark, becoming moist, and then I pick up the horn and and gonna play some epic shit, you know, and then end up sounding like a sick cow or something like that because yeah you. The point is, you never know exactly how it's going to behave until you, you do that first blow. And that, you know, that's the better of work. It keeps me on my toes, it keeps me edged, uh, and uh, it creates life, basically. You know, I have to think. Uh, every time I use it, I have to think. I have to become one with that an instrument and, and follow that. Uh, it, because it's not going to follow me, <laughs> you know. So, but yeah, there are many things, and, and there are many like uh, pioneers who I have 
utmost respect for um, carrying this, this traditional torch. And one of them is, is Eilis Gundersen, who is on stage with us tonight, you know, uh, who, who is playing the, these um, old uh, wind instruments, Scandinavian wind instruments, goat horns, bronze lure, uh, the long horns, you know. They, he's one of the reasons basically why why this tradition is still alive and so for me to share the stage with him um, so often it, it's a great honor and to have like this carrier of of of, um, of tradition uh, part of of, of Barcelona is, is, is a fantastic thing there are many other people I, I could mention but I feel it, I feel it's uh, appropriate to, to mention Eileen Thank you, Einar. That was the last question. This is the gentleman, Badruna. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy the, the evening. <laughs>